All right, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to cover some very basic uh, camera animation uh, techniques, camera creation and animation techniques, uh, so that you can fly a camera around your model and uh, and animate it over a, a, a time frame, a, uh, a length of time, whatever you feel is appropriate. All right, so the best way I found to create a camera, you can do it the manual way, which is come over here to the create panel, select cameras, and then target or free camera. A target camera is a camera that is always looking at a target. Uh, so you can align the target to an object and the camera will always uh, be looking at that target. Or you can do a free camera, which is a camera that uh, um, orient itself however you orient it but is not staring at a specific target so uh, but I'm not going to create a camera that way because that way uh, is slower believe it or not when I mean, you don't have to explain it it's it's much faster all right so what we're gonna do is we're going to use it holding down alt and middle mouse button holding down the alt key middle mouse button you will uh, just sort of go around your plant and pick the angle that works best for you. So for me, I don't know, this that one's kind of cool, I guess. Um, all right, so now that we oh, now that we have it the where we where we want it. Okay. So for zooming in and out, you could either scroll the wheel, which is going to do big jumps, uh, or you could hold down alt and control and just sort of dolly in like that and move the mouse of course and, and dolly in uh, like that yes and then to pan you hold down the center mouse button these are all things that you just sort of take for granted after you've done them 11,000 times all right so I like that angle so the very next thing I'm gonna do is make sure I don't have anything selected because it seems to not work very well when you have something selected but I don't have anything selected so that's great and I'm gonna hit control C and that will create a camera so you can see here we have camera 001 camera 001 on our viewport uh, and that is by default if you come over to the modify panel it's a target camera I can change it to a free camera if I like but um, I don't like so I won't all right so we have these options for the camera but the first thing I notice is that man there's a lot of black space here in my viewport and uh, that is because I have set up safe frames so show safe frames and that is related to your render resolution right now my re render resolution is set at 640 by 480 so this is 640 by 480 if I were to set that to another resolution say uh, come over here to output size and come down here to HDTV video 1920 by 1080 uh, also known as 1080p it looks much better there's less black space and I'm gonna create a, uh, a arc and I'm gonna say arc I want you to go from you to you and then I want you to do one of these okay and that looks pretty awesome and I'm pretty amazed that it created it right at the elevation that I wanted to that never happens okay so now we have our arc and that is cool um, so what we want is we want the camera to be uh, uh, attached to this arc the whole time and we don't have, want to have to worry about um, trying to manipulate the arc so that it, it looks really good uh, because we created it with the software it's an it's a primitive 2d primitive and uh, and and it's going to be created perfectly the only thing that we really want to come over here and take a look at is the uh, interpolation steps and that is how segmented is this arc six um, is going to be pretty segmented so as the camera goes by those segments it's going to bump 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 and so we really want to up that to something like uh, 24 or 48 or 36 or whatever but uh, I think 24 is a, a good number um, okay so that's 
that looks good. In fact, I'm going to up it some more. And you can see how our arc is getting much smoother. If I, for example, were to dumb it down to like two, there you can see the segments, uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go 36. Um, I don't know why I'm doing it in multiples of uh, 12, but I am. Okay, and uh, so that's cool. And so now we want to tell the camera, all right, just use this thing as your path uh, while you're animating. And so we say animation constraints, path constraint, and then there's this little dash line here saying, okay, tell me what path you want this camera to take. Click on the line and uh, voila, our camera is attached to it. So now you see it's created keyframes for our camera at uh, 1 and 100. And if we scroll now, it's going to create a nice even arc. Uh, and then we, when we need to adjust something, we can adjust the path and we don't have to even touch the camera. So if we want the elevation, for example, to be raised a little bit on the camera, uh, we can do that. And even if we like our low angle here, but by the time we get to this side, we want it to be a high angle, we can either arc the, uh, the arc, <laughs> so change the other end of the arc to uh, move up, or we could just animate that arc over the 100 frames here so that oh, auto save. You hate me. All right, so I have it selected. Where's my handles? There they are. Okay, if you can't see the handles, just uh, right click on the select and move button and then you can manually move it up like that. And you see the camera just stays attached to it the entire time. So now we have this nice sort of uh, motion. So let's see how that looks. All right, aside from making you very dizzy, it looks pretty good. Uh, if anything, it's too fast, right? Uh, 100 frames is not enough time to uh, take in the beauty and splendor that is this project. So uh, what we need to do is we need to stretch time out and, and uh, uh, have our animation go a bit slower so we can really get a good look at... Um, at the points of interest on it. All right, so to do that, again, we will right click on the play button, and then we want to do two things. Generally, you want to change the frame rate to film, which is going to change it from 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second. Um, doing that will save you, for every second of video, it's going to save you six frames, and um, as you saw earlier, our render took 20 minutes. Uh, so multiply that 20 minutes by the six frames, and and uh, you're talking about substantial time savings per second. Um, and these, you know, depending on how long your animation is, that that could be um, days <laughs> of rendering. Uh, you will also notice that the end time adjusted uh, because 3D Max defaults to 30 frames per second. Um, if you have unlimited resources, okay, do 30 frames per second because it, um, I, I just, I think it looks nicer. I think it's smoother. They say you can't tell the difference. I can tell the difference. But uh, then again, how much time do you have really uh, to render out? You got a render farm, do 30. If you don't, uh, do film. Okay, so we're going to work with film. And then we have the end time now. The end time. Uh, 30 frames per second over 100 frames is the same as 24 frames per second over 80 frames as far as uh, time goes. So it automatically rescales, uh, not rescale time button, but 
it scales the time according to uh, the, um, the frame rate. Now we want to rescale the time though. So to, uh, because as I said before, the whole reason we're here is we want to stretch out the, the time it takes to, uh, to wrap around this, this guy. So I'm going to click rescale time and it's going to say, all right, start time, zero, yes, end time. I want the end time to be, uh, let's see, 240, and I want it to take uh, 20 seconds to go all the way around uh, in the half circle. Uh, so if we do the math on that, that's 24, what did I say, 20 seconds? So 24, uh, 240, 480. So I want 480 frames, not 80 frames. So I'm going to type in 480. I'm going to click OK. OK. And now it's uh, it's rescaling the time. Uh oh, bug. Pause. All right. Well, that took longer than I anticipated, but it finished um, a mere three seconds after I paused the video. So uh, not that big a deal. But now you can see that if I were to say, okay, all this is good, and we say, go to the very start, now we can see that it's a much slower, much more deliberate uh, look at the plant. That's kind of cool when that happens. Okay, and so uh, maybe you want to adjust the the uh, arc so that it's bigger or that it you know covers more of the plant uh, when it swings around like to here because we're starting to get out here where there is nothing and then lots of things so um, maybe we come over here and we adjust our arc as it auto saves auto saves my life and if we go up here to uh, scale I hit R that's a shortcut uh, and we just scale up or down the arc you can see that um, it's gonna affect the camera because the camera of course is attached to it okay so let's uh, let's wrap it up and uh, thanks a lot everybody hope you learned a lot and see you next time.